welcome back to my channel. This is Lolly. I am really excited today. Let me get a better angle here. I'm really excited today. You know, I'm a Craft Text ambassador. And when I saw this color for the month of June, I got really excited. I have been eagerly waiting to share this with you ever since I received this. When I saw this, I immediately thought of honeycomb. Honeycombs and bees. And so then Lori Nunemaker came out with this tutorial on how to make this drawstring tote. And I knew that I wanted to play around with Craftex as the base here. Now she quilted her fabric. Craftex has a nice sturdy uh, structure to it. So I'm not going to need to quilt it. it. This bag will maintain its shape by itself. So based on these measurements here, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be the base here, the accent rim is going to be this color. So first of all, the craft text needs to be uh, 18 by 13 inches. And then the accent material, the rim around the band there, you need, let's see, four strips that are two and a quarter by 13 inches. The handles, you need two that are six by 13. That's these. The upper fabric, which is going to be this adorable bee pattern, and so this needed to be 9 by 14, cut two of those, and then you need an interior fabric for the inside of the bag, and I decided to use this again. This is the same size as the Craft Text, which is 18 by 13. So, oh, and I also know that I need drawstring ties, and you see she used some cording here, two of them at 36 inches. I think I'm going to make mine. And I will give you a link down below to my video on how to make your own cording. I will not be using green, obviously. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut, according to her instructions, cut interfacing, fusible inter, uh, fleece interfacing. Um, that will be for the band across the top and also on the handles, and I will get those fused. I will not give an extremely detailed video on how to assemble all this, Min, because she's already done an excellent job. I will refer you down below, giving you a link to her tutorial. But I will roughly show you my assembly process um, and something I'm going to do to it once it is done to embellish it. Let's go. Okay, so I have prepared the handles, and so I took the strip of fabric, I did the fusible interfacing, which is 12 inches. Remember, this is 13 inches. This is 12 inches by one and a half. I made mine just like an eighth of an inch shorter than that or narrower than that. Uh, the fabric was folded in half and pressed and then folded in half again toward the center and pressed. I pressed the fusible fleece interfacing on there according to the package instructions. And then I took it to my sewing machine. I, top, I clipped it and top stitched all the way down. Uh, that side, this side, and right down the center I stitched as well. I make sure I go all the same direction. As I don't sew down this way and then turn around and sew this way. That way it pushes all the top material in the same direction and you get a nice smooth finish like this. And you can see how pretty that turns out. Okay, now I will stitch this one and I will put the interfacing on the, band, the decorative rim. Okay, so of the accent rim, two of the fabrics get left alone, and then two get the interfacing ironed onto them. And so these are two inches by 12, iron right into the center, set those aside. And then when you're doing the this here, the bottom of the tote, we're going to take the craft text and see how that's long this way. We're gonna fold it in half, clip it, don't pin it, but clip it, and stitch here and here. Now, if you were doing this in fabric, you would put right sides together with craft text. There's no right or wrong side. Um, however, we're also going to do that with the lining fabric. So that one does get put right sides together. I'm going to clip that and sew the sides together. Okay, so I have stitched quarter inch seams on the short sides of both the lining and the outside of the base. Next step, step is to cut two and a half inch square from the seam line out, seam line, and all the way at the bottom. These are templates I got from Lori Nunemaker's shop. 
Um, you can just even use cardboard to make a two and a half inch square. So then cut these out like that. And we'll do that on the fabric as well. Then we're going to turn it this way and stitch straight across the top, making sure that the bottom uh, crease, if you want, you can really make that nice and crisp like that. So that when you do this, you can line it up perfectly with the center of that stitch line and just stitch straight across and do that on all four. These two and these two when I cut those out. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. We have this nice box shape when you do that. We're going to leave the inside inside out. This one we're going to turn right side out, which is a little tough with craft Tech. So you have to be patient and work with it slowly because it's rather stiff. We'll turn it right side out, and that's when I want to put my decoration on it and paint it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to really crease these edges well, just so that I know what my surface area is. I want to put paint a B like right about here. And I think I need to put some books in here to give me something of stability. So now I have a firm surface and I realize this is kind of close to the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to draw my B out. And I actually can draw it lightly with pencil first and erase it if it doesn't go the way I want it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press this for about 30 seconds with a dry iron. And what that's going to allow is for, um, it will really get that ink set up in this and permanent so that when I paint over it, it won't kind of drag the ink through there. Okay, so I'm going to take black paint and paint some of his stripes in and white paint for his little wings. And if I get outside the lines with this white paint, I can always go back over it with the Sharpie once I'm done. There we go. And this is Apple Barrel white. Very cute. Now I'm going to come in with the black and do parts of his body. And I have folk art and this is uh, just pure black. Alrighty, I'm going to let this dry uh, and then I will probably give it a nice good seal with uh, probably this, so the Duraclear Ultra Matte. And he is all dry and all set and I, and I did put one coat of the Duraclear Ultra Matte Polyurethane. And so you can't see where I did it and where I ended. So it's perfect. And I just love this bee. I think it is so cute. And I love the pop of white there. Now I might come back later and do a small bee with little like um, dotted lines for its flight pattern. But I don't know right now, right? I'm just going to think about it. So the first thing I need to do is to get this in here. And I'm going to match these seams up here and clip them. Okay, I'll set that aside for now. And we're supposed to take these next. These are the accent rims. I'm going to turn those over, measure four inches in. And mark those. Okay. 
And then we just clip these handles on there. And what we're doing is we're going to center it right over that blue mark. And then spin this around this way without twisting it. You can already see how cute this is going to be. Look at that. Isn't that going to be adorable? Oh, love it, love it. I'm so excited. And now we take one of the other side, the one that doesn't have the interfacing, and clip that on there. I'm noticing this is really wanting to spin, so what I'm going to do is do two clips on each one of these. And I will do this one off camera. And now I'm going to stitch on the long edge that I have clipped on both of these. Okay, those are sewn. I'm going to take them to the iron and press my seams open so they will be both open like this before I join these together. And now I can face these the same way with the fleece on the same end and I can put these together like this and stitch across here and stitch across here after I clip them together uh, like that. Okay, now I'm going to fold this down all the way around and pin that top edge nice and crisp. And now to attach that. So I'm going to look at the side seam here, the side seam here. I'm putting this handle down around this. And I am going to pin that in place, matching the side seams and going all the way around. I'm going to pin that in place. And I'm going to stitch all the way around here, quarter inch seam allowance like I've been doing. Okay, that is stitched on there. And now Lori says to take our drawstring fabric Fold a quarter inch in, a quarter inch in, and top stitch all along that short edge, this short edge, this short edge, and this short edge. Now, right sides together. I'm going to stitch these two together all the way up, stopping two inches from the top. Oops, sorry about that glare. Okay, so that's done. Now, we're going to take the two top corners Fold it in just a little bit on both sides, like that. Let's see if you can see that. Just pointing it straight out. Then we're going to fold this down a quarter of an inch, press it, oops, quarter of an inch and press it like that, corner, and then a quarter, and then fold it all the way down at that two inch mark, and then we're going to press it like this. We're going to do both sides and then take it to the machine and top stitch one edge and then the other edge right across here. Okay, so that stitch, you can see why we did that little corner edge was so that you could be able to see this and get your casing in there. Now, I know I've gone pretty quickly through this, but it's because Lori already did an amazing job and I don't need to just repeat what she did. So now it's still inside out. We're gonna take it and put it down over this, matching the side seams again, and clipping those in place. And I left my clips over by the sewing machine, so it's going to put this all the way down. And just like before, top stitch all the way around after I get this clipped in place. So I'm going to top stitch all the way around, uh, quarter inch seam, and uh, when you're using craft text now, remember that this is really thick, so just take your time and slow, sew slowly on the machine. Okay, so I stitched it and then I zigzagged all around that. Pull this out. I think I can unclip all of this right now. I will get to that later. Actually, I think I'll leave that because I do want to top stitch that. Alrighty. So now, this is like that. I need to pull my handles upward. 
Oh, this is so adorable. <laughs> it's gonna be so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, now right in here is where all of these layers are joined together. I'm just kind of giving it a little nudge right now. And what I'm gonna do is reach in and I'm going to push all those layers of fabric straight down like this toward the bottom and I'm going to press it then come back and top stitch all across here to seal that in. Okay, so I did that and I used black thread on purpose. I really wanted that contrast. I love it. Um, and anyway, this was out as I did it, obviously. Then I pushed, excuse me, this was out as I stitched. Then I pushed it back in and I top stitched all along this top edge as well. And now I have made cording in yellow cotton thread. It's a little on the slim side, so I think I might play with it for a while and see how I like it. If I want it chunkier, which would be really cute, then I think I will use two layers of yarn to make this. And I will give you a video down below as to how I made it. Uh, so you can use one of these to thread these through. Um, when it's really thin material, I don't have good fortune with it. So I was looking for a good safety pin. I couldn't find one. So I'm actually going to use a paper clip threading that all the way through so I won't have notice the direction of my paper clip that way I won't have any it won't catch on the fabric as I push it all the way through paper clips who knew huh so like I said I will go ahead and play with this cording see what I think if I want it chunkier I will just make another cord and I'll make it thicker and then out one hole and in the other. I want both of these ends to come out the same hole over here. These are supposed to be 36 inches long, so when I cut my yarn, I cut two segments at 90 inches each to make cord. And there we go. Now I just take thread. <laughs> just take this back off the paper clip tie those two ends together. Okay, now I need to do the other one. I still have loose threads lying around to do the other one. Now I'm going to do it from this hole. So um, this bee fabric I ordered online from Hobby Lobby because we were under quarantine, you know, and I mean not quarantine, we were at, under stay-at-home orders. We weren't sick. Um, no one in our family has gotten the virus to our knowledge, and, you know, we know that many have not been so fortunate. But I was stuck at home, uh, or safe at home, however you look at it. So now I should have one knot on one side and one on the other and I just pull them tight and there it is. So here is my drawstring tote. We've got two handles. Let me open this up real quick here. Get my bottom nice and flat. We've got the drawstring on the top, the cute little bee fabric. This is just so fun. I was so excited when I saw this. I knew I needed to do something bee themed. I didn't know what until Lori came out with this video for this tote. And I was so excited. I could hardly sleep for waiting for June to get this project out. Thank you for watching. Look at the links down below. And I will give you a link to hopefully to find some of the saffron craft text, which is so fun to play with.